Air pollution problems can start with a building's materials and finishes and with the construction methods used to build or renovate the building. IAQ is compromised when inadequate ventilation does not provide enough outside air. Chemicals used in cleaning and office products that become trapped inside a building, as well as outdoor pollutants caught inside, add to the problem. Mold or other microorganisms that grow, multiply, and disperse particles through heating, ventilating, and air conditioning HVAC systems are other significant sources of IAQ problems as well. Poor design and maintenance of the HVAC system supports the growth of microorganisms. People contribute skin scales, exhaled carbon dioxide, CO2, airborne particles, vapors, and gases. Cleaning, cooking, broiling, gas and oil burning, personal hygiene, and smoking all add pollutants to indoor air. Pesticides from pest management practices can also pollute a building's air. Indoor air pollutants can be circulated from portions of the building used for specialized purposes, such as restaurants, print shops, and dry cleaning stores into offices in the same building. Contaminants in buildings are so widespread that almost every building contains one or more recognized contaminants. There could be asbestos and lead, high levels of carbon monoxide, CO, formaldehyde, petroleum products, mercury, ozone, and radon, irritating fumes, tobacco smoke, gases, and chemicals. The overall result of these pollutants can be sick building syndrome, SBS, which is diagnosed when more than 20% of a building's occupants complain of such symptoms as headaches, upper respiratory irritation or eye irritation, and when these symptoms disappear after leaving the building on weekends. Symptoms may also include irritation of mucous membranes, dizziness, nausea, throat irritation, and fatigue. Although the specific causes are not identified, the symptoms coincide with the time spent in a particular building and disappear once the affected person leaves the premises. Building-related illness, BRI, describes the same range of ailments, from mild allergic reactions to more serious infections, including pneumonia. However, BRI is the term used in cases for which the specific cause is known. Both SBS and BRI are largely the result of poor IAQ. Symptoms that appear suddenly after a change in a building, such as painting or pesticide application, are another indication of IAQ problems. Some people may be affected by IAQ problems, while others who share the space may not be. Complaints about BRIs may result from other causes, such as illness contracted in another location, acute sensitivity, including allergies, job-related stress or dissatisfaction, and other psychosocial factors. According to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, studies show that symptoms may be caused or exacerbated by sick building syndrome. Inadequate ventilation has been identified as a major factor in BRI. Opening a building up to outside air can result in the need for greatly increased energy use to properly heat, cool, humidify, and distribute that air. In addition, already conditioned air in the building is lost to the outside. ASHRAE has attempted to address both IAQ and energy conservation concerns by revising its ventilation standard to provide a minimum of 15 cubic feet per minute CFM of outdoor air per person, increasing this minimum to 20 CFM per person in office spaces. In order to improve IAQ and prevent contamination by pollutants, the building's architect, engineers, and interior designer must work together. The interior designer can specify appropriate materials, products, and equipment, evaluate the amount and toxicity of emissions given off during installation or use, especially where surfaces of possible pollutants are exposed to the air and to people, review maintenance requirements for cleaning processes, stain-resistant treatments, and waxing that emit pollutants.
Provide the building's management, users, and owners with appropriate information about maintenance requirements. Bathroom ventilation. Bathroom exhaust fans should exhaust directly to the outside. Many of the problems people have with adverse reactions to building contaminants develop after new construction or renovation. Renovations in occupied buildings are especially likely to introduce pollutants into the building's interiors. SBS problems can be prevented by maintaining the HVAC system, including periodic filter replacement, replacing water-stained ceiling tile and carpet, prohibiting smoking, venting restrooms, copy rooms, printing facilities to the outside, storing and using paints, adhesives, solvents, and pesticides in well-ventilated areas or unoccupied, allowing time for building materials in new or remodeled areas to off-gas pollutants before occupancy. During construction, interior contamination can be prevented by compartmentalizing construction with partitions and doors with closers, blocking connecting plenums and air conditioning returns, isolating work areas from occupied spaces, supplying extra ventilation via window or door mounted fans, keeping the construction area under negative pressure to prevent contaminants from spreading throughout the building, complying with IAQ requirements, protecting construction workers from allergies and multiple chemicals.